Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Floor Planner. My name is Bob, and as I always state, I am here for customer success. I am here for you all. And um, back to our recordings. We do these recordings uh, on a monthly basis. Um, a little review of the updates that were generated and went live on your platform in the previous month. I thought it'd be a little interesting today, since this is the start of uh, 2022, a Happy New Year to everyone. Um, maybe a little recap. Let's take a look back maybe at the top 10 updates um, from last year. Um, I think it'd be kind of cool to do a little glance back in time. So before we take a peek at those, um, I want to show you all again, just a little reminder as to where to find those. Um, hop into my floor planner account for a second. This is uh, my floor planner account, uh, my dashboard homepage. Um, if you go in the upper left-hand corner, those four squares, that is the dashboard will take you back to your profile tab. And when you're on your profile tab, you have this right-hand sidebar. And this right-hand sidebar, there's a tab in there for the new features, these new updated tools. The most current one is always listed at the top. And yet, if you'd like to see all of the updates as they've been added to the platform, just hit the More button up there, and you will go to this site. And you can actually view these cute little snippets um, that have been generated for you to certainly make you aware of any of the updates as they go live into your system with the most current one listed up here at the top. And if we look back in time, a month ago, et cetera, uh, there have been quite a few updates in the past year. So I've selectively kind of gone through this entire review and um, took a glance, maybe picked out um, 10 really uh, dynamic, uh, to me, dynamic uh, updates that were added to our platform. So let's go back to maybe our PowerPoint presentation and take a glance. Take a glance. So yeah, recap of our top 10 updated tools from 2021, a year in review. Um, it all started back then a year ago, January, really Awesome. Uh, 2021 started with a creatively restructured platform, a little bit more vertical, looking a little different uh, graphically on your screen, um, but definitely created a foundation to build an exciting new base of tools to uh, inspire your continued floor planner project project production and um, your individual success use, utilizing those. So again, it all started with this updated interface uh, and website to go ahead and create a new base to add these new updates to. So, so um, 10 to one, let's, let's start with number 10 out there. I, this I thought was absolutely awesome. Um, 3D handles uh, for editing, not just for the mouse. Um, really, really cool new handles when you're actually viewing your model in 3D that you can go ahead and uh, rotate, um, elevate, move items, any of your assets uh, orthogonally. Um, really, really cool to work with your mouse. Yet, this I found extremely valuable to work with tablets and iPads, so that if you uh, are working with your tablet or iPad, utilizing your finger or a stylus or an Apple Pencil, um, really, really cool. It's not replacing a mouse. I think a mouse is still very dynamic, but certainly gives you a whole new set of tools um, to manipulate your 3D model actually while you're in 3D with those uh, tablet type formats. And also there's um, a great edit power with uh, the 3D views that uh, give you a left-hand sidebar functionality, very similar to what you're working with when you were in your 2D view when you're selecting your assets. Number Number nine, yep, I had a lot of people asking for this. How do I open my doors in 3D? Um, because they're always closed, you know, no matter how they're showcasing in your two-dimensional presentation, your doors are closed in your 3D images. Um, there's a new tab out there, uh, hide doors in 3D. It's one of your settings in the 3D settings, um, and it'll open up 
all of your doorways uh, for your 3D tour and your 3D view inside. Um, if you want to really play with this and maybe show other types of doors cranked at different angles, it'd be uh, more of a go back into your asset library and start doing searches for doors as an asset that you can actually insert. Um, yet uh, just a matter of just even turning the doors off, really, really valuable. Number eight, yeah, decorative pillows and so much more. Tilt objects. Um, this was uh, actually a big question and request from most interior designers that really wanted to do those decorative pillows on the sofas, um, where certainly we could place them on the sofa and we could rotate them and we could align them and overlap them and make these great compositions of decorative pillows on a sofa. Yet we want to go a little further. So let's make it look a little more casual and start to tilt those pillows. So the tilt feature, when you select an item in 3D, it's one of your uh, now available tools that you can actually tilt the item, not just for pillows though. So beams in the ceiling that you need to tilt. If you have a full length mirror and you want to lean it up against the wall, um, how exquisite that you can now tilt those items. Even when you're accessorizing a shelf item, um, and the uh, com composition of, of accessorizing on a shelf, you may want to make items look a little bit more casual. So the ability to tilt them just a little bit more, uh, pretty cool. Then the cutaway walls feature had a, a new uh, element added to it. So auto hide wall mounted items. So if you haven't worked with the cutaway walls, tool, which is actually one of the settings in your 3D settings. Um, it's cool that cutaway walls will turn off the wall, the exterior wall between your camera and your target view inside. And you can go ahead and twirl around your space and have those walls go ahead and disappear as you're trying to view your space. Great feature here was the auto hide uh, the wall mounted items. So any of the items that are now mounted on the wall, artwork, TV screens, etc., um, will also now disappear. So it's they won't get in the way when you utilize the cutaway walls tool. I, I probably would have wanted this one to be number one, but uh, it's really, really strong out there. Surfaces can now have thicknesses. This is huge for me. Um, yes, you can draft two-dimensional surfaces in a 2D plan, much like to place grass in your exterior or pavers outside um, or specific roof materials or ceiling uh, biomes and such. And you can raise them on the floor, you can tilt them, but they were always thin. They were always flat items. Um, you can now give them thickness. So if you select your surface, one of your options in your left-hand sidebar is to go ahead and actually give thickness to the surface that you created in your outline in your two-dimensional plan. Um, works really beautiful for the roof materials, as you can see in the example here, like the Spanish tile roof to maybe make it four inches or five inches thick so it doesn't look paper thin anymore. I found this really valuable for those other items that may not be in the asset library um, or that you're trying to conceptually work with as placeholders, uh, millwork, it's sort of custom units, uh, outside fire pits, et cetera, things that may not be necessarily in your library. You can now trace them out in two-dimensional plan, give them thickness and height. And the beautiful thing about surfaces, you can apply materials to them. Totally cool. So really works great to uh, fill in the voids for any of those items that maybe that are not in your resource library and you need to create something um, close to resemblance, but definitely in the proper dimensions, adding thickness uh, to your traced out surfaces of your two dimensional plants works really, really well. Sidebar update. Wow, this, this was really, really cool when this came out um, during the past year. When you select um, left click on any asset, a piece of furniture or the walls, or even the room area itself, anything that you select is kind of the 
floor planner technique, if you get used to it, left click, select an item, a wall, a room, et cetera, and you get a left-hand sidebar. The left-hand sidebars were expanded in the past year with these updates to go ahead and give you at a glance all the information about the item that you've selected and the ability to make edits. Um, very simplified, uh, tons of information available to you at a glance that you can go right in there and control and make changes. Filters for paints and wallpapers. I kind of put these two together. These were actually two different separate updates, um, but really, really cool. Um, paints, yeah, we can certainly go out there and find that hex number, do a Google search for the hex number from any paint company and take that numeric code, enter it into Floor Planner, and Floor Planner will custom mix your paint for you. Um, but there was only one palette of colors that was out there. It was a, actually a European paint company. I believe it's Dulux. Um, didn't even realize that completely until this update came out because now there are other branded vendors of paint companies that are available and their specific color palettes uh, from their fan decks that are now available to um, by actual vendors. But again, you still have the ability to find uh, maybe an, uh, another paint company that's not even listed and find that hex number accordingly and have the floor planner uh, go ahead and custom mix your paint. Wallpapers also. Wallpapers have also now been categorized by the specific vendors. Um, and keep an eye on these. These continuously keep expanding and keep growing within Floor Planner. I think you'll have a lot of fun with applying these wallpapers and paints to your wall surfaces. Wizard improvements. Hey, a few words about room styles. If you haven't investigated room styles as yet, um, room styles are, are a collection um, that you can go ahead and categorize um, a specific contemporary style, living room, et cetera, et cetera. And you, it's a flooring material, wall material, specific pieces of furniture, all within that one composite that you may call Bob's contemporary um, living room. Uh, once you create this sort of style uh, unique to a room type, you can go ahead and apply it to other structures that you've drafted that are of the same room type. So if you draft another living room, you can go ahead and take this collection that you created as a room style and actually deposit it straight away into that uh, structure that you've created that you've identified as a room type of let's just say living room for right now. And if your room style is also associated with a living room, it would populate that entire room uh, automatically for you. So the flooring material, the wall material, and the specific furniture would be placed in there for you. Um, this whole language of room styles is one of the uh, wizard improvements. Um, when you start a brand new project, one of your tabs in there is for the wizard. Um, and this one area specifically for room styles, really, really valuable. If you are not a pro account subscription with Floor Planner or higher, you still have the ability to utilize the existing room styles uh, that have been created in the database inside Floor Planner. So you can still work with room styles. If you are a pro subscription holder with Floor Planner or higher, you have the ability to create your own custom room styles. So hopefully that'll give you some insight to start investigating a little bit further into room styles. Extremely valuable. Uh, number two, hmm, had a little trouble saying number two or number one on this. Number two, I think this is really, really cool. Wallpaper and paint in front view pop-up. Um, I've talked about this during the year about the fact that you can upload your own JPEG or PNG image to go ahead and create your own custom wallpaper, mural, um, even a piece of artwork on your wall, or even a PNG image that could be a company logo for a company environment for uh, behind a receptionist desk, et cetera. Uh, yet the new front view pop-up uh, was modified. And in, in there, it's not just the upload anymore. You can now actually do those colors that we just talked about, the colors and paints. You can actually, while you're viewing that front view, that straight on elevation of that wall, you can now also apply paint colors from your paint library within Floor Planner and also even materials 
from the material library with employer planner. So not only can you upload your own custom within this particular front view, um, but also having the colors and materials available to you, really super valuable. Um, number one, um, most current, this is the update that came out in December um, to show exports in the editor. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to take a peek at this. This was released uh, in December. Um, there is a tab in your left-hand sidebar when, I think it's beyond left-hand sidebar, there's a stack of tools over here on the far, far left-hand edge. That one on the very far bottom, when you are live inside your actual project, you can go ahead and select this bottom tab and it will post all of the exports that you've created, your PDFs, your JPEGs, your PNG images, they will all be posted over here on the left-hand side. So you no longer have to close out of your project to go into your dashboard to go to your exports to see the actual exports you created for that specific project. Now you can actually view them while you're live inside the project. And you also have the option in here to download them to the device you're working on while you're live in the project. And you can also even delete them. Maybe you saw some images that just weren't good enough for you and you're really willing to get rid of them. You can actually delete them from here also. Wow. Um, Hopefully that uh, wasn't too long for you. That's uh, my recap of the top 10 from the past year of 2021. Um, know that also since, you know, the basics with floor planners since 2007, making space planning and interior design accessible to everybody, kind of the mantra um, of floor planner to keep it simple as the tools are being given to you from, from your perspective, as a user's perspective, yet in the back of house um, within floor planner is to make them better, stronger, more dynamic, and give you more power. Um, so the combination of those two should be giving you a lot more flexibility for the coming year. Um, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your patronage of utilizing Floor Planner. Um, know that I'm available for any questions. If I can get you over any training hurdles along the way, you can always reach out to me at bob at floorplanner.com. And I hope to see you at our future webinars. We have our webinars rolling on Tuesdays and Thursdays that you certainly can register for. And keep an eye out for the new updates that will be coming out for 2022. Um, hope you guys have a really great start to the year and a successful 2022 going forward. Thank you. Have a great day.